guys, welcome to the Chris Camaro channel. Today I've got a bit of a repair video for you. Uh, basically my heater doesn't work. So there's a few reasons why that might happen. Um, your water pump could be shot, but if your water pump is shot then your car won't be, won't be getting, uh, your engine won't be cooling either. Uh, and that's not a problem for me. Uh, it's just the heater. So I'm more inclined to think that the heater core is blocked. Um, if it were leaking I would probably have seen evidence of that somewhere. So I don't think it's leaking either. The car's got low miles on it. So it's probably blocked up. Um, and actually, the coolant does tend to run low. And last time I filled it up, it was pretty damn low. So it's quite possible that there's some scum or something that got you know accumulated in the bottom that got shot into the heater core before I was able to fill it again. Um, so anyway, we're going to do this job of flushing out the heater core and there's a there's a right way and a wrong way to do this and I'm going to show you the wrong way uh, because this is the Chris Camaro channel and that's what I do. Um, the right way to do it is to buy like a kit or go out to the plumbing store and buy a whole bunch of fittings and uh, adapters and things like that so that you can basically hook a garden hose up to the outlet ports. So you've got a couple hoses you can see them over here actually I'll just point them to you now. Um, so in this car, you got this one right here, and you got that one right there. And those supply, well, th this one here on the right supplies coolant over to the firewall. It goes through the firewall, goes through the heater core, and then it comes back out through this one over here. Back to the, uh, back to the, the fluid uh, circuit. So normally what you'd do is you'd disconnect the hoses from the firewall you'd um, thread some sort of couplers or adapters onto that and then the other side would go onto your garden hose. You'd fire some water from your garden hose into one of the, uh, the pipes, usually the outlet side, and then it would uh, shoot all the dirty water out the inlet side. You'd collect that. Basically that would just clean out your heater core and then at that point you wouldn't have any blockage. Plus, there's another complication too. Look at, look at where the access is. I mean, to get tools down there is not easy. I can't work down there. So I'm going to actually, you know, take a shortcut and I'm going to work up here where they connect to the block because it's a bit easier to access this area. So uh, stay tuned. We're going to we're going to see what happens. So we're in the car now and I'm measuring the vents to see what temperature they're at. Looks like about 26 ish, uh, a little bit colder on the passenger side. Um, this is at temperature, this is uh, this is as warm as the engine ever gets. Uh, it doesn't look like it's that warm, but uh, that's because I've got a slightly colder thermostat installed as an upgrade on my car because it's supercharged, and I want to keep the uh, coolant a little cooler for the uh, for the supercharger. But I can tell you that when it was working, I was getting heat. So even though it's only reading, uh, you know, 70 something or 80 or whatever, it's uh, still supposed to put out more than 26 degrees heat coming out of the vents there. I've got the fan cranked and everything like that. Temperature's maxed out and uh, you know it's at chest level so I should be getting something out of here but I'm not. So uh, this this we're gonna try to fix today. Okay guys so obviously to do this job you're gonna need to disconnect these uh, hoses here. They're held on with these flathead screw uh, hose clamps so you're just gonna need a flathead screwdriver long enough to reach down there and, and disconnect those hose clamps. And then you're going to need something to grip them with. Um, you can do it by hand, actually. Just put some gloves on, maybe grab it, and you know, wiggle it until it's loose. Or, or you can use like uh, uh, vice grips or something like that. And you're going to want to put some catch trays down on the um, on the driveway or whatever, because uh, it's going to it's going to leak all over the fucking place. Okay. Now, once you got your hoses disconnected, like I do, uh, they're just resting on the spigots there. They're 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 actually fully disconnected. I just didn't want it leaking as much. So once you got it in this condition, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rip a page right out of the uh, red green show and we're going to use duct tape to like literally just duct tape the bastards together. We're going to put the, the hose here onto the outlet side, which as I said, the outlet side is that one on the left. And this is what it should look like. Um, now, of course, this is an absolutely disgustingly bad job. Of course, it's going to leak but it doesn't really matter because you're just gonna have to do this for a few seconds just to flush enough water through it uh, to, to, to fire the crud out the other side. And hopefully it'll hold together long enough to get a little bit of pressure. Uh, the heater core doesn't require a lot of pressure 
to flow through. So you're going to be supplying more than what it usually gets anyway. So it should back drive. And, and it, like, like I said, because we're going in reverse like this, it's going to back drive all that crap out. Um, and that should be enough to see an improvement. So uh, at this point, all you got to do is just have another person to help you out to turn the water on and you're pretty much good to go. Great. So uh, we're ready to do this. Uh, and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, go. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, so um, it's thoroughly been flushed out. Uh, don't really know if it worked or not, but we're gonna reconnect everything and, and see. Um, just just a, a warning, uh, because you're doing a purge like this, um, you're gonna fire out some of the coolant and you're gonna replace that coolant with water. So just uh, be aware that your dilution rate is gonna change on the coolant that you have in the system because we're not going through all the trouble of actually replacing all the coolant. It's unnecessary. Your overflow tank has plenty in it, uh, but just be aware it's gonna dilute it a little bit. So maybe if you have some concentrate, uh, you can, you know, add, you know, like a hundred mils or, or something of concentrate just to compensate for the, uh, for the water that you're putting back into the system because you can't really purge the water that you fired through the line unless you like blow it out with air or something and i don't care about that uh my my coolant is actually already pretty concentrated as it is so i'm not really too concerned about that anyway um but like i said just be aware of that so as you can see it's not that hard to reconnect these things um they're pretty soft you just put them on with hand pressure get your hose clamps back in place and then get your flat head and and tighten them up, and uh, and then you can do your te your uh, you know test your your heater inside the car and and see how how well it worked. All right, so we're at around the same temperature that we were at before. So let's turn the heat on and see what happens. I'm just gonna go to my controls here and crank the heat up. There we go. Holy shit. That is so much better than it was before. We're already like double what we were at before. I think we I think we were at 26 before. Now we're at almost 50 here. I mean, yeah, it's it's hot. Like it, it feels hot. It's still going up like a little bit, but it seems like it's kind of leveling off now, so I would say probably between 55 and 60 is our new maximum temperature now. I definitely needed this because winter's coming and without a heater, I'm fucked.